um, Ranking Member Kaplan. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Secretary, I can't thank you enough for stressing the connection between um, energy and job growth and economic opportunity in this country. Uh, I think you're probably the first secretary that's ever said that. Um, and uh, coming from a part of the country that's had so many jobs outsourced, mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate that you can see it. And uh, I just wanted to mention that in the field of controlled environmental agriculture, uh, the bottom line, as we return fruit and vegetable production to this country, energy becomes the critical factor uh, in these uh, large houses now that are being built. 40% uh, of the bottom line is energy. We simply must solve this scientific challenge to reduce that cost to producers, and we will feed the world. So um, I know you know what I'm talking about in that regard. It is a technical challenge, and we need to be successful in meeting it. On the industrial side, Ford Motor uh, brought back heavy truck from Mexico many years ago to our region, and I said to the CEO, I said, what can I do to keep these jobs here? He said, reduce my energy costs 30%. I thought, how am I going to do that? So thank you for seeing the connection. Um, I, uh, my first question is, DOG, uh, DOE is charged with promulgating congressionally mandated energy efficiency standards for appliances and equipment, and I'm concerned that your proposed rule for distribution transformers will adversely impact domestic steel production and our national security. Cleveland Cliffs, uh, which is helping America's steel industry rise again under terrible international uh, competition. Uh, it is our country's largest flat-rolled steel producer and only producer of grain-oriented electrical steel for power and distribution transformers. They've indicated they will close their Butler, Pennsylvania, and Zanesville, Ohio electrical and steel operations if the rule is finalized as proposed. This would be tragic for the over 1,300 union workers and undermine domestic supply chains again, not only for a grain-oriented electrical steel, but for non-oriented electrical steel, which is essential for EV production. Could you commit today to work with stakeholders to make sure the final rule does not adversely impact domestic production or goes and knows, as they call them, and preserves the use of goes for distribution transformers? Thank you. Uh, yes, we uh, have been hearing and taking in a lot of feedback, uh, working with industry, working with uh, UAW, et cetera, who have weighed in on uh, the proposed rule. Adjustments have been made. The final proposed rule is, is now in the interagency uh, and will come out before June, uh, which is what's required by the consent decree that we are under. It's one of the beauties of being able to do proposed rules and getting that input. That is our, our feedback loop, and uh, we, have, we have heard, and adjustments have been made. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, good luck on that. Keep pushing. Um, Secretary Granholm, the Department of Energy has tremendous capability at its research labs to develop new technology to address the needs of the agriculture sector. How can the Department of Energy partner with other agencies to develop sensor technology that will allow uh, for the in situ real-time monitoring of nutrients and pollutants that contribute to harmful algal blooms, uh, certainly in the western basin of Lake Erie, throughout the Great Lakes, the Everglades, and so many other places across our country. Yeah, we're happy to work with you on this. I know a number of our labs obviously are focused on the bioeconomy and on ways to enhance agricultural output, efficiency, et cetera. So um, eager to follow up with you on the specifics that you're asking about, but we, uh, we've got a whole slew of labs that are focused on making sure that they are working with agriculture and the bioeconomy to ensure uh, that it continues to produce, produce at home, and that it's efficient. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that openness. And finally, on this first round, on domestic solar manufacturing in my home state, first solar manufacturers thin film solar modules, as you well know, and it's the only U.S. headquartered company in the world, uh, in the uh, in the world's top ten module producers. In 2024, over 50 percent of new U.S. power generation was solar. How about that? And yet we are ceding the market to China. Over 1.5 years worth of solar module demand is currently sitting in warehouses, according to the International Energy Agency, and the market for building new facilities is dire. 
We are at a make or break inflection point when it comes to reshoring end to end solar manufacturing supply chains. Is the Department of Energy working with the Department of Treasury to ensure that the Inflation Reduction Act policies incentivize domestic manufacturing through the solar supply chains? And do you have any options to help directly in the critical areas of wafer and polysilicon production? Uh, and then finally, the department, through the Federal Energy Management Program, recently announced funding for the Department of Defense to make improvements to the Pentagon campus, including installing solar. Can you commit to ensuring that if contractors or third parties install the solar or provide the power, they adhere to the highest standards of domestic content and labor? Great. Thank you for this. Um, the solar story is a really great story in the United States, for solar in particular, having backlog now of bookings uh, well into the years ahead, that's great. It's all because of the Inflation Reduction Act and the uh, irresistible incentives that have been embedded there. We had a record year last year of 32.4 gigawatts of solar having been installed in the United States. There is, uh, for dem on the demand side, a 30% tax credit for homeowners to be able to install solar, for developers, a similar 30% investment tax credit, and there is a per unit credit, which includes polysilicon and waivers, wafers. This uh, also is a, uh, a huge story for domestic content, because developers who get that solar credit get an extra 10%, so a 40% tax credit, if they use domestic solar produced panels. And this is one of the reasons why our uh, build out now of solar manufacturing in the United States is so critical. You are so right that China had a very strategic plan to be able to corner the market on solar, and they did. And so what we are doing, we are not ceding anything. We are fighting back to get that manufacturing back in the United States, and it's working. Thank you. Much success. We want to help you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you.